Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klemzeski with Adam Atkinson. We are still in our how-to series. We're gonna talk about how to manage supplements. So the first thing that comes to mind, Adam, everybody says, when should I stop creatine? And so we'll tackle that big one first and then we'll talk about some of the other things. But my personal advice is, first of all, never to stop it. There's some value in creatine in that it, it's drawing water into muscle cells it helps make you fuller and, and therefore denser and even harder, better separation. But if you do perceive that it makes you hold subcutaneous water, I don't really see that in a lot of people. But if, if you think it does, it's a matter of just bringing down the dose a little bit. So all of the best studies say that between two and three grams a day maintains saturation anyway. So I personally ask my clients just to stay on it, but at that, that small of a dose, Adam, do you do anything different? Yeah, I make sure they keep it consistent and locked in. Um, I had a client um, this weekend at Junior Nationals. We saw a lot of weight fluctuations, and we realized it was from sporadic creatine um, usage. And so I, she was like, I need to cut that out, right? Anyhow, I was like, actually, I'd rather you just keep it in. Um, you're going to notice a lot more muscle fullness and um, just um, better endurance when you train, which is definitely a good side effect. So um, keeping that in, I occasionally get a client who does, you know, maybe think they feel bloated from it. So I might dial that back a little bit or um, have them stop. But if you make a change like that, you want to stop it probably a couple weeks before um, one, just so it has enough time to lose that saturation in your system, but two, so you can uh, gauge if this was a positive or negative change. But I'm with you where if someone thinks it's bloating them, maybe versus 10 grams, they go five grams or even two to three grams a day instead of completely eliminating it. Is there anything that you see that should be eliminated in your opinion? Any kind of supplement that you would stop? Yeah, Yohimbi know, tends to draw some water underneath the skin. So that's something I, I really am big on spot checking and making sure people aren't on that. It's in a lot of fat burners. Um, there's also something called Alpha Yohimbi as well. And uh, I can't remember the um, spelling of it, but it starts with an R. But um, that's in a lot of fat burners as well. And that's something you have to look out for and something you probably want out about 10 to seven days before your contest. Mm. I, I would like to think that anything that you're doing regularly, your body is used to and would be fine to stay with. But I think sometimes the opposite could be true that people are taking a ton of supplements. So uh, I, I just did a podcast uh, a, a few days ago talking about how even things like spices and condiments, regardless of the sodium content, can really have a major shift. I had a client who was just totally plateaued, and we worked through every single variable. And finally, she said, well, I'm putting just tons of seasonings and, and very indiscriminately, just whatever she can get out of the, uh, the spice rack. And when she stopped that on all of her meals, no joke, she lost eight pounds in two or three days. And we had been plateaued for a month. We're just taking out every other variable. And so I, I think the same can happen with some supplements. And so at least it's something to watch. I don't have a list of things that I can say this is definitely something to take out. But if you just take an inordinate amount of supplements, it's something that you might think about titrating back on, getting rid of some of the things that might be non-essentials for the last week or two. Uh, I don't know if you have any advice for something like that, but it, it, it's a it's a point of skepticism in my mind. I've seen a lot of people fill up a gallon jug with BCAAs, and then they're sipping on those all day, which essentially can break their fast. Now, you know, I have uh, people who get lean very easily, and they might be able to get away with that. Um, but if you have a harder time losing body fat, that might be a little more detrimental to your prep. Um, it just takes you out of the fasted state that you want to be in when you're losing body fat. Yeah, and I agree. And in, in this whole context of this particular episode is how to manage supplements during peak week. I should have specified that. But, but I agree. You know, everything that you ingest has some kind of calorie value. So a lot of these supplements have amino acid bases or something else, even something like L-carnitine, that, that has a calorie base. So 
you add all of these things up and somebody could be getting a couple hundred calories they're not uh, factoring in or like you said sipping on branch chain aminos is just like infusing protein into your bloodstream all day long your body can use that as energy instead of body fat so a lot of things to consider guys as you're looking at how to manage your supplements leading through peak week but you really want to just spend some time noting exactly what you're doing and look for that consistency. So hope that helps and we will catch you next time.